now let's go on and talk in uh, and, and do a, do some scenarios that are actually a little bit more realistic. It's very rare that I would hard code the ID of the item that I want to um, of the ID that I want to access and then um, use it directly. Instead, I might um, uh, I might do something like is in this program here. And actually, what I actually want to do here is um, this, and that helps me uh, explain this much better. And actually, it's not what I want to do either. I want to do this. There. Okay. So I'm now going to use a program that calls from one template to another and then ends up doing really the same thing as we did before. Um, uh, so what I've introduced here is the ability to call and use that ID as a parameter um, in order to get at the information that I want that's in the item that I want. So here we have two templates. One is called caller and the other one is called um, uh, getting info from an ID and in template number one I call template number two and when I call it I pass it a parameter so in addition to talking about um, to talking about getting information from an ID I'm also um, introducing or reintroducing the concept of calling uh, calling templates with parameters here and you'll see that um, pretty quickly we're back to the old scenario all I've done really is I've broken out the call to the template that does the work of getting information out of the ID into a separate template so I can call it over and over again. Um, and so now I have reusability built in and I can call this template anytime I want to get the title and author out of a particular item. Okay, so um, I, I use this XSL call template. I name the template that I want to call and it happens to be this one right here. And then I call it with a parameter. I get that parameter the, val the, the name of ID and the value of at ID. So one question I could ask you here is what's the current node and what needs to be true of the current node? And you would tell me, well, since that's a relative X path, it just says at ID, obviously I sh I'm supposed to be on a node that has an ID. So um, uh, maybe, you, maybe you've gotten used to this idea now, by now, or maybe it's um, still trying, it's still sinking into you. Um, but a basic motif we've used in all of our XML files has been that we have information types in them and inside those information types they always start with uh, an element and ID and almost always I would actually I would say always they also have a child element that says title so what that does is it establishes a standard that's a really useful standard for linking which is if it's an item of a certain type it will begin with a tag that identifies it as which type it is and then it has an ID attribute that I can always know and I can always know where it is and it has a child title attribute as well so I can always be, be sure that all I need is the ID to get to the title. From there different information types can certainly vary but I want to keep consistent that it has an ID attribute and that it has a child title element so that I have something to depend on. So in this case when I'm on the caller template we'll assume that up here there was code before here that somehow set the current node to an item that has an ID. And now having that ID, I can now reach into, uh, or I can now call this other template with the ID and use that ID in order to get information. So let's finally look at lines 106 to lines 114 and talk about how that happens. Inside this template, which by the way, notice none of this template nor this template is a uh, is, a, is a, um, a match kind of template. It's a name kind of template, which means that it's kind of like a, a subroutine or a function for us. Okay, so I'm in this, and the first command here on line 105 says Excel parameter name equals ID. That takes whatever was passed. In this case, it's the ID attribute of the node that I'm on, and it puts it in a variable. So from line 106 down to line 112, we're doing exactly the same code. In fact, I just cut and paste the code from lines 90 through 95 into this space, simply to show you that I can get that ID in by passing it into a parameter as well as putting it into a variable. So in the end, a variable and a parameter end up being the same thing. They end up being this, uh, this dollar sign uh, business. And you, what you can think of, what the way you can think about it is when I create this parameter on line 105, what I'm really creating is a variable. 
and I'm putting whatever's passed in this ID parameter into that variable, and then from then on I can use it. Okay, summarizing. We have an ID. We need to get from the ID to the item that has that ID. And so we're going to use the ID as a key. So this X path here, which you see in many places in this example, is the key. I have the ID, this gives me the item. And then from there, I can put any X path I want to get to the particulars of the item that I'm interested in. In this case, I'm interested in the title. In this case, I'm interested in the author. I can do other things once I've, once I've isolated that item. So this little construct here, item, and of course item is, I'm using that generically here. It could be whatever kind of item you're looking for, but the item whose ID is ID, that's a key construct because that's a dereferencer. The reference was in the, was in the, uh, was in item A and it was a reference to item B. Now I go from the reference to the item. So I've dereferenced and I've gone to the item and now I can work with that item. 